new book out. It's called Casino Conquest, uh, How to Beat the Casinos at Their Own Game. So let me ask you, how do you do that? Okay, well, obviously you can't beat the casinos at a lot of games. In blackjack, with card counting uh, and proper betting, you can you can beat that game. You can get a small edge, somewhere around 1%, uh, depending on how good you are. Uh, in video poker, if you play the right machines, uh, you can actually get an edge. And certainly with comps, that can throw you over, so more money's coming to you than going into the casino. With craps, if you can control the dice... Uh, and change the probabilities of the game, you can also get an edge. And obviously in poker, in a regular poker room, uh, if you're good and can beat uh, enough of the other players, you, you can make money. So um, there are ways to make money in the casinos. The casinos are well aware of this, by the way. It's not as if uh, you know they're walking around blind. But um, if you're good in those games, uh, you can beat them. Well, one of the things I find so unfair, and I got and you'll probably agree with me here, you practice so hard, you get good, let's say, at controlling the dice. You learn the numbers. You're good at blackjack. You practice poker. You start beating everybody. You know, but in blackjack and craps, they have the right to basically ask you to leave the casino, maybe even kick you out. Is that correct? That's not fair. Uh, oh, uh, absolutely. Uh, you, the problem is that the casino is a private enterprise, much like your house. I mean, if somebody comes to your house, you don't want them in there. Uh, you just say, go away. I don't want you here. So the nine people that are going to bring me gifts, that's okay. The one person that's going to steal, they're out. <laughs> right, exactly. That's how the casino feels. Now, one of the reasons why I think it's unfair is, think about it, if you were um, a first responder at 9-11 in the World Trade Center and saved people's lives, if you fought for us in Afghanistan and Iraq, and suddenly you go in a casino and you're good at the game and they say, leave. You've risked your life for your fellow Americans and the casinos kick you out. So, you know, in, in a sense, if you're going to offer a game and someone is smart enough to beat that game, either you don't offer the game anymore or you just tolerate the fact that certain people are going to win some of your money. Let me ask you this. You just sort of appealed to the heartstrings there, talking about people that have fought for the country. Um, are there real-life stories of that where these guys have gone into a casino, they've been asked to leave, and they're thinking to themselves, hey, I fought for your freedom, and now you're kicking me out? Come on. Uh, definitely. Uh, one of my best friends is a, is a cop who went into the World Trade Center. Uh, I mean, risked his life, may even have some kind of lung disease right now. Uh, a, a cousin of mine uh, was a fireman, an emergency fireman. He was actually retired from the fire department. He came into the city and worked in the rubble of the World Trade Center. Both those guys have been banned from casinos. Why? Yes, I mean, because they can win. I mean, uh, one can win at craps, the other can win at blackjack. It's totally unfair. Um, I, I do understand the casino viewpoint, but let me give you a, a specific example. Okay. The Golden Nugget, downtown Las Vegas. They were interested in me doing a program there, you know, right. about the different casino games. And they, they want you as a speaker and an analyst, whatever. Exactly. And they said, but however, you cannot bring anyone into the casino who's an earner. This is what the guy called him, an earner. And I said, okay, what's an earner? And he goes, well, anybody who can count cards. I said, well, most of the people who are going to come to something like this, they're going to be $5 bettors, $10 bettors. If they're a card counter, they may win $20 an hour while they're there. And he went, no, I don't want any earners. No I'm kidding. Sure do the thing there, but, I mean, this is a golden nugget. You canceled, did you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right on. This is a golden nugget when Steve Wynn owned it. Think about it. No kidding. I mean, they got money coming out of their yin yang. What are they worried about a twenty dollar earner? Well, you want an ultimate, the ultimate story. I'll give you the worst, worst story that right. happened to me. Um, I'm almost afraid to say the name of the casino, but I'll give you a hint. It's downtown Las Vegas. Okay. It was known as a casino that was not afraid of any kind of action. Well, I, I'm thinking Binions. I'm not going to say. <laughs> that's exactly the casino. Okay. Anyway, my Good hit, by the way. Good hit there. Um, they had a great single deck game. This is in the early 90s. Um, and we were not high rollers then. We were betting $25 to $200. I had a single deck game. Um, now, we were really good. We were a great team. And all of a sudden, the dealer started throwing the cards into my face. One at a time. Bam, bam, bam. Obviously, really? I backed up. Um, and I felt 
metal in my back. Metal. And I turned and there was this steroidal security guard with his gun in my back. Wow. All right. Now, I turned it my, now obviously I was scared to death. I turned to my wife and I said, let's walk through the craps area. That, those of you who know that casino, the craps area is right near the exit. Um, and I said, I don't think he'll shoot us in that crowd. And we took our chips, we got up, and we left. Now, that's scary. That is scary. Yes. I was playing at the Circus Circus. Again, this is in the 90s. And I was very stupid, I have to say. I was betting a, a minimum of $5, a maximum of 300 and 300 meaning $600 uh, jump, which is ludicrous. So you're going $5 when the cards aren't right. They come good. You're going 300 Three hundred and three hundred, <laughs> three hundred each. I mean, I, I didn't particularly care for the casino, so I figured I'd just go in there and really try for a big win. Well, it happened. I mean, I just happened to hit a really good streak when the count favored me. I go to cash in my chips. I notice this guy with a mustache behind me, and he had followed me to the cage. I figured, well, he's just a player. I start to leave the casino again. He's still behind me. He hadn't gone to the cage to cash out anything. I crossed, like, there's an alleyway to the uh, casino next to it, I think. Slots of Fun, I think it is. And I go through Slots of Fun, and I turn around, the guy's still following me. I start walking up the strip, he's still following me. No way. Yes. Now, my thought was, well, maybe he's trying to find out if I rented a car or who I was. Now, in those days, I used to be in really good shape because I used to be a boxer. And I turned around, and I had had it. I walked up to him face to face. I said, what are you going to do? And he turned around, and he left, and he went back to Circus Circus. But this is a kind of idiocy that does go on. Um, in Mississippi, I was escorted out of Fitzgerald's, um, which is now called Fitz, I think. And um, Henry Tam Buren, another you know, really well-known, best-selling ga gaming author, he had to come there, drive, and, and take me out, to, you know, uh, it is ridiculous. You're not doing anything wrong. It's not as if card counting or dice control uh, is illegal. The Bellagio had to do with dice control. Um, now, I will admit that I do make mistakes. The mistake I make is if I find a casino that's really nice to me uh, and they're friendly and pleasant, I just keep going back time after time after time. What then happens is there's a slight change in management. There may be a new pit boss or two. In the case of Bellagio, there was a fairly big change in management because a lot of the old Bellagio guys went to Aria. Okay. Um, and all of a sudden I'm noticing, you know, they're really not friendly to me anymore. Uh, they're starting to make nasty comments and, and that type of thing. The, the pit boss was a fan of mine. He read my books. I would go there with a few friends, and we would play, and we were winning money over time. They would give us gigantic suites. Um, they felt that when we were there and when we were recommending that casino for, for dice players, that in, in reality, Bellagio would make more money than whatever money we could ever take from a place like that. I mean, it's a mega casino. Then slowly I noticed, yeah, I don't recognize some of the guys in the pit anymore. And they would start to come over to the table, and instead of saying, hey, I read your latest article, I read your book, uh, they would start to say nasty things like, oh, you think you can beat us? You can't beat us. Make sure you hit the, the back wall hard. We always hit the back wall, by the way. Uh, that type of thing. And uh, finally, it came to a head. In fact, um, I was sitting at a Pi Gal table, which uh, there's another game, by the way, where you can get a, a very small edge, but you can't get an edge at it. Pi Gal, okay. And a um, guy comes up face to face. I mean, he's within an inch of my face, and unfortunately, he spit. Um, so that was fairly disgusting. And he was yelling at me, We don't want you here anymore. Go across the street to Caesars. Now, I'm very calm when, when this happens. I'm not nasty to them. I know they have the right to do that. This happens to you a lot. It's happened a lot. And I'm, I'm, I'm friendly. I go, Okay, fine. This is your casino, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave. And I did. I left. I've never been back again. But uh, I don't recommend Bellagio anymore as a place to play. So, uh, but ultimately, they have the power. I don't. I enjoy writing my books. I enjoy teaching people uh, to play the best that they can play. And those people who want to become 
advantage players, hey, you know, you can do it. Well, let's talk about it first of all. How long did it take you, for instance, to control the dice? What is controlling the dice? How do you do it? I've heard terms like sliding it, I guess. They slide one dice along the, the car. How does that work? Okay, well, sliding is against the law. That's right. illegal, so you can't do that. It took me three years uh, to learn how to actually control the dice. Um, in those days, this is like the late 80s, early 90s, I, I actually practiced in the casinos. It never dawned on me that I should have a craps table at home, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, when you talk about me being, uh, you know, really brilliant and all the rest of it, it it's just <laughs> work. Uh, and waking up and going, you know, that, that was pretty stupid. I mean, I it's a lot of practice, home. right? It's a skill, right? It's got to oh, be. It's a skill. It's yeah. an absolute skill. What you're trying to do is get the dice to make the fewest possible movements um, as they're going through the air. You don't want one going one way, one going the other. When it hits the table, you don't want one bouncing high, the other one scooting out. So what you're trying to do is influence the dice so that you can reduce uh, the appearance of the seven. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it, which is a, a little bit of a higher skill, is to focus on certain numbers that you, you will try to have come up greater than their probability. Now, you may seven out, which is, you know, you, you lose your turn with the dice relatively fast. But if you can hit those numbers two or three times, you make money. So essentially, dice control is a physical skill. Even though the back wall has pyramids, uh, in one of my books, uh, Cutting Edge Crafts, I explain exactly what pyramids really do to the dice, as opposed to what the casinos think they do. Um, and, and you can get a, an edge over the house. Now, you can't get an edge on every bet. Some of the bets are so bad that uh, you could be the most skilled dice player in the, in, the, in the world. You just can't beat those bets. You have to bet the right bets. But it can be done. It's a skill. But it took me three years. Three years. Okay. Now, something else you said I found very interesting, and I was interviewing a guy by the name of uh, Alan Chainsaw Kessler, who's won millions playing poker, and there he was talking with me on the radio about playing the slot machines, and I went, wait a minute, is that a leak in your game? Is that a vice? He goes, no, I'm just trying to break even on the slots because of the comps. How much do comps play in, in the lifestyle of a guy who really wants to make it in Vegas? Well, okay, comps basically are just simply how much you bet. Um, it doesn't matter whether you win on a given night or lose on a given night. They take a percentage of what you bet uh, and figure out what the house edge is on the game you're playing. And then they give you that percentage back. By the way, he, if he's playing slot machines all over the country, there's no way in, there's no way he's breaking even on the slot machines. There are some machines that you can find in Vegas and some in the Midwest, none in Atlantic City, and some in Mississippi. They're called banking machines. At a certain point, uh, you actually can get a slight edge on those machines. But if you're playing slots as a steady diet, <clears throat> you're throwing your money away. By the way, poker players are interesting. They're dynamite in a poker room. I mean, I'm not a great poker player. These guys are terrific, highly skilled. They just they know how to wipe up the floor with you. Simultaneously, many of them are crazy gamblers. I know. They lose the money they win on the way out the door. Exactly. I've been at the, the craps tables with these guys. They're betting the stupidest bets. <laughs> throwing money away. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. You are one of the world's greatest poker players, and you're acting like a complete idiot at the table. Can you give us one name? Can you mention a name? I don't want to mention a name, but I can tell you that we're talking about some of the best in the world. You mentioned the boxing game. Uh, you were a former boxer. Um, briefly tell us about that, and then tell us about the boxing game itself. And Is it dead uh, because of all the fixed fights? Is it still fixed, Rick? You know? Okay, well, I, w I was an amateur boxer. I was not a professional boxer. And this is when I was young. In fact, I, at my very last fight, I took such a beating that uh, 20 years later, I had a, um, a seizure. No way. And they couldn't figure out what the heck caused the seizure. Actually, it was, it was more like 30 years later. Wow. And, um, finally, they, they would go through my life. Like, were you in a car accident? No. Did you ever fall down the stairs and hit your head? No. And we kept going back. And finally, I said, oh, wait a minute. I remember my last fight. I don't remember the third round. I really? The second round, and I don't even remember it. I wasn't knocked out. And, you know, my manager said, oh, man, you were really good in the third round. 
And I thought, oh, yeah. I <laughs> and I was hospitalized for a week. So um, it, it was real. And in those days now, you know, because I'm 65 years old, in those days they didn't really take the kind of care they take now uh, with amateur fighters. As far as professional fighting goes, the greatest fighters don't tend to fight each other. Although last night they were... Yeah, Pacquiao out. knocked out. Wow. Right. Now, those two guys are tremendous together. They're two great fighters. But those fights are rare today. You don't you don't see as many of them as you did in the past. I mean, UFC's kind of taken over. And there's no doubt about it. And right there, they, the competition is fabulous. The best fighters fight each other. People want to see that. And I think we're boxing... Um, they just kind of lost. Um, they've lost their impetus now in Europe and in the uh, East Eastern Europe countries with the Russian fighters and the Polish fighters and all the rest. Boxing is really big, uh, and you'll notice more and more of those fighters are you know world contenders and world champions. Casino Conquest, how to beat the casinos at their own games. The website is www.goldentouchcraps.com, and this guy certainly got the golden touch. Frank Scobletti, I got it right, didn't I? You got it right. Thanks for being our high roller today, buddy. Okay, thank you.